Probably the hardest one lesson learned uh, when building computers for uh, AI algorithms is that there's a fundamental trade-off between speed and accuracy. This is counterintuitive because normally when we're building computers, uh, we can focus on just making the computer faster. Given a program, I just like to build a computer that runs it faster. That's pretty straightforward. Um, we can also focus on building better algorithms. Um, we can, you know, think carefully about, uh, you know, for example, the complexity or, or the, you know, how to break down the problem using uh, various approaches. Um, we can come up with very clever, very sophisticated algorithms to solve uh, hard problems like um, how to get packets from here to there on the internet. Um, and so we can actually just decouple these issues of making algorithms faster from, um, you know, building better algorithms. Uh, and unfortunately, this doesn't work at all on machine learning. There's this fundamental coupling uh, or a fundamental trade-off between the speed of an algorithm um, and the accuracy of the algorithm. So let's use a simple example to demonstrate that. Uh, one really common example in machine learning is a cat detector. Given an image, I'd like to know whether or not that is an image of a cat. Um, so I can build a really fast algorithm by doing the following. Um, if I only care about speed and I care about nothing else, um, I can do the following. I can, uh, regardless of what image um, I input into my system, I can return yes, that is a cat. Um, so you can imagine that the program that computes yes, that is a cat can be a one-line program. Um, I could implement it with a really simple circuit, um, and that circuit could run really fast uh, with really low energy. Um, on the other hand, uh, I might want a really complicated uh, algorithm that's really accurate. Um, so on the other hand, I might want an, an algorithm that um, for every single image in the world, uh, only the images of cats um, are going to be recognized as cats. And so the algorithm to do that we know needs to be fairly sophisticated. It needs to know that there's different kinds of cats. It needs to know, um, you know the different lighting conditions. It needs to know the different environments that cats can be in. Um, and it needs to uh, understand, you know, that cats have things like whiskers and fur and uh, different colors. And, and uh, cats are pretty complicated and the world is pretty complicated. Um, so the program that can, you know, given a bunch of pixels, uh, determine whether or not there's a cat in there um, is also going to be pretty complicated. And the neural networks that we know that can do this with high accuracy um, you know, might have millions or, or hundreds of millions of parameters in them. And so they're not small and they're not cheap. Um, and so when we run those programs on real computers, um, those, uh, the computational requirements are pretty high. So it'll take a long time, it might take a lot of energy to compute. Um, so you can see that there's this spectrum between um, uh, really simple algorithms that are really fast but not very accurate, and really sophisticated algorithms, really complicated algorithms that are very accurate um, but have high computational requirements. Um, and there's actually this uh, trade-off between the two. So you can kind of take an existing algorithm um, and you can make it a little bit less accurate. And by doing that, one of the things that we actually realized, um, and this was actually a way of us fooling ourselves, was that we could sacrifice a little bit of accuracy and gain a really huge improvement in speed. And so we commonly come up with these uh, you know, modifications, like maybe we come up with a new neural network architecture and we uh, train it on a big data set uh, and then we measure its performance and we discover that, wow, it's about, you know, maybe 2% um, you know, less accurate than uh, the bigger model that we started from, um, but it's 10 times cheaper. You know, it does 10 times less compute. And so, um, you know, that looks like a really great trade-off for us um, because, uh, you know, it's only a small loss in accuracy and it's a huge reduction in the computational cost. So we think that's just a better algorithm. Um, but we're not really taking into account that there is this fundamental trade-off between um, speed and accuracy. And so we're really fooling ourselves. Instead of finding a better algorithm, we're using a same algorithm or a similar algorithm and just picking a different point on the trade-off space. Um, so, uh, you know, we're picking, um, you know, a, a lower uh, accuracy requirement. So we're um, happy with a, a little bit lower accuracy. And the thing that we don't realize when we're, you know, really happy about those kinds of results is that um, any algorithm could do that. Um, you know, we didn't come up with something necessarily very clever there. Um, one really strong baseline that we can actually use is we can just make the model smaller. So we could train the same model with fewer parameters in it, the same kind of architecture with fewer parameters in it. And we'd find that there would be this trade-off that, 
you know, we might be able to reduce uh, the number of parameters by 10 times um, and uh, only lose a few percent in accuracy. Um, we could also apply other kinds of techniques like pruning, um, like using low precision. Um, and these are actually surprisingly strong baselines. Um, it's actually pretty hard to come up with an algorithm that at the same level of accuracy is a lot faster um, than, you know, just, just applying one of these pretty straightforward changes to an existing algorithm. Um, so, uh, one of, because there is this fundamental trade-off between speed and accuracy, when we're trying to build uh, new learning algorithms, um, we really have to think about this entire spectrum of a very small, very inaccurate version of the algorithm versus a very large, very complex, very accurate uh, version of the algorithm. And we're not looking for uh, algorithms that are just you know, evaluated on a different point on this trade-off, like maybe you know, we don't want to do things like compare a very inaccurate model to a, a very accurate model. Um, we'd like algorithms that dominate uh, other algorithms. So we'd like algorithms that are um, you know, simultaneously uh, much more accurate when they have large computational requirements and also much faster um, when we scale down the computational requirements. Those are really better algorithms um, rather than algorithms that are just evaluated on a different point of this, uh, tr this trade-off. Um, so, uh, yeah, prob probably the, the biggest lesson learned here is that this trade-off really does exist. And so um, we should look at the relationship between speed and accuracy and not just focus on one or the other. We have to do co-design. We have to consider uh, the accuracy of models and the speed of models when we're designing them um, and not just focus on one or the other. Mm -hmm.